Hi everyone, this is the SMUF team presenting the fourth and final part of a tutorial on how to create a smart TV application with SMUF. In our previous session we had managed to develop an application that displayed the weather for three cities. In the last part we sent a notification to our app adding one more, a fourth city to display its weather. Let's now refresh our browser and see what happens. We can navigate through the original three cities, but how about the last one we had previously added? The related data is gone since data from notifications is not persistent. We need our application to remember the data from its previous execution and we can achieve that using SMUF local storage. This provides us with functionality to have a key value store for our application. Here's the logic for our case. The application loads the city list from local storage. If there is no city list in the local storage, then go ahead and use default cities. If there is a city list already, then use existing list. Whenever a new notification is received, then the city list is updated but also stored in the local storage so that it can be used in the future. What this code does is that it calls function getItem of local storage. GetItem requires a key as a parameter. In this case, we use a key named MyCities to store current city list. The called getItem returns a promise object. Don't worry if you're not familiar with promises, we will explain what this code does. Function then allows us to define two callbacks to be called on success or failure of the original action, which is the one that created the promise. The first callback is called if get item succeeds. The argument passed is the result of get item. If it is null, then we use default city list. Otherwise, we use the result. The second callback is called if there is an error while calling get item. In this case, we use the default city list. One interesting fact about promises is that they always return a promise. This way, we can chain execution logic. On the snippet we just added, we do exactly that. When the city list is populated, either from local storage or default values, we call load weather in order to load current weather. The last thing we need to do is to store any updates to the list when we receive a notification. We can do this easily by modifying the callback of smartphone notifications. In the lines we just added, function setItem gets three arguments. The first one is the key to use for storing values to local storage. The second one is the value to store for the given key. In our case, it's the cities variable that holds city list. Finally, it accepts a function that is used with arguments, any possible error, and the value that was stored. We can check what we've done so far by resending a notification with the New York coordinates like we did before. And if we refresh our application page and navigate within, we will notice that our newly added city is still there. Now that we have a fully developed application, we can test it on actual Smart TV platforms. And this is where you get to meet the beauty of SMAP command line tools. We start the terminal or a command prompt. 
we navigate to the directory where our source folder lays and give the following command. As the command runs, we get to see some warnings. We can just simply ignore them. After a while, we will see a new directory named packages created in our project. Inside this directory, we will find one subdirectory for each supported platform, namely Android, Amazon's Fire TV, Samsung Smart TV, Tizen, and WebOS. Congratulations! You are now ready to run the application from each directory to each of the corresponding platforms. That's it. Thank you for watching. This is the Smuff team wishing you happy Smart TV application coding.